Item number SCP-6587 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-6587 is preserved in a standard storage unit in the Site-24's anonymous artifact wing. Digital copies of the book's contents are available on request to personnel possessing Level 3 clearance and above. Description SCP-6587 is a French pastry of unknown authorship dating to the late 12th century. SCP-6587 contains detailed description of animals, both real and imaginary, in nature, with accompanying illustrations. As with similar texts, these depictions are highly embellished with little scientific basis, relying instead on allegory and religious symbolism. While the bulk of SCP-6587's content is largely unremarkable, it is classified as anomalous due to the inclusion of several unique summaries found in no other sources. These descriptions appear to correspond to existing species of animals whose existence was not known to medieval Europeans, including those native to the Americas, Oceania, and Antarctica. There is currently only one edition of SCP-6587 in Foundation custody, and it is not believed any further copies are produced. Several passages of SCP-6587 have been recorded by the Department of Mythology and Folkloristics below translated from the original medieval land of the Ignavas, meaning idol or slovenly. In the vibrant forest of St. Brandon's Isle, there lurks the most loathsome of creatures, the shiftless Ignavas, doubtlessly the most indolent beast in creation. The Ignavas has a face of a bear and the body of an ape, with fur that has grown thick and matted to neglect. So detached are these creatures from spiritual concerns that they may never set foot on the ground, but instead confine themselves to the treetops, where they use their great talons to hang listlessly from branches. The Ignavas spends all its days in heatless slumber, too torpid even to dream, and only housing once a month in order to feed and mate. As seasons pass, the Ignavas' untended pelt becomes overgrown with a kind of green mold, fighting the company of all manner of worms and maggots. After consuming the creature's protrude hide, these vermin will then continue to partake of the Ignavas' flesh and innards. Although so idle is this animal that it scarcely takes any notice of its own destruction. Of the Peregrine, meaning foreign or outlandish, of the many curious animals found in untamed wilds of Terra Australis, none are so strange in appearance as the proud Peregrine, which is the enemy of the tactless and uncouth. These creatures possess the bill of a duck, the body of an otter, and the tail of a beaver, and are said to be the only beasts in creation that both make milk and lay eggs. The peregrine restricts its movement to riversides and lakes, feeding on shrubs and small fish. The peregrine possesses no harm to men should they approach him, provided they afford him his due reverence. The peregrine retains its wrath solely for those who laugh at or mock its extraordinary form. When met with ridicule, the peregrine will strike the unfortunate lout with its feminist claws, delivering a sting unmatched by neither sword nor serpent, causing him to die in a slow agony. Of the Berrier, derived from Boreas, an ancient Greek personification of the northern wind. In the frigid wastes of furthest north, 
there is a species of tall bird called the Burrier, which cannot fly, but are fine swimmers. For lack of seed and berries, the Burrier lives solely on fish and slide on their bellies along the frozen plains for ease of movement. These birds are neither wholly righteous nor wicked. Much like men, the Burrier held potential for acts of both good and evil, as attested by their dense plumage, which is black and white in equal measure. A Borier may live for seven years before shedding its feathers on the solstice. Once this occurs, the birds must travel in their nakedness to meet their fate, assembling atop a great marble cliff where they throw themselves in unison from its ledge. Those Borier which have lived lives of careless decadence will plunge helplessly to the craggy shore below, where the broken remains are scavenged by the ravenous sea leopards. However, those among them that have lived humbly and frigidly well by grace of God make use of their wings, and thereupon fly south to the fronted domain of Pester John, where they live for ever and warmth.